Lithium demand shooting through the roof in 2021, and it's showing no signs of letting up. That's pushed the valuation of one lithium miner to about $3.5 billion. But here's the catch. It hasn't produced an ounce of lithium. Let's bring in Jonathan Evans, Lithium America CEO. John, great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Melissa. When will you produce that first ounce of lithium? Uh, later next year. So we have a, a, a late-term project in Argentina. It'll actually be the largest lithium capacity project coming in the market in decades that actually will come into production uh, in late late next year. Actually, no, late late this year. <laughs> and uh, we will uh, will actually be starting construction in uh, uh, our other, other asset in northern Nevada, which is the largest lithium deposit in North America. And, and we just are recently closing on another asset which is fairly close to our uh, our first project in Argentina. So very excited to to get into uh, uh, servicing this sector, which is going to be very challenging over the next decade. Yeah, there are a lot of estimates in terms of how many EVs are projected to be on the road, Jonathan. And I'm sure you've done the math. I'm, I'm curious, how short would the world be of lithium? Let's say the projections of 230 million EV vehicles on the road by 2030 is is right on. Um, how much lithium would that require and how much would we be short? Can you give us a sense of the shortage? Yeah, essentially for today, we need to expand the lithium supply in the world something like five times, which is unprecedented. Uh, we're at about, say, a little less than 500,000 tons. So it's quite a small industry. Uh, and lithium isn't exactly rare, but it is rare to find deposits that are economic. And it takes a long time to build these. And they're, they're, the capital investment's quite uh, healthy, too. We're talking hundreds of millions to a billion dollars. So uh, there's a lot of work to do, uh, but um, there's luckily there's several companies here in the sector like ours that are uh, ready for the challenge. Capital intensive. Do you have the, the capital that you need to, to fully bring all of these assets up to up to speed and up to production? That you for own? Argentina, for mm -hmm. our first asset, we do. Uh, we have funding uh, requirements for uh, our, our asset in Nevada, which will likely take the form of a partnership and perhaps even uh, some government-backed loans by the Department of Energy. And then in Argentina, the new asset that we'll be closing on, uh, we'll be uh, putting a funding plan together for that. In, in some of the notes that I got um, from a conversation that you had with one of the producers here, John, you had indicated that you thought that there is trader and investor enthusiasm around your stock because one of your assets is in Nevada and it's fairly close to Tesla's Gigafactory. Do you have any relationship or partnership with Tesla at all right now to to produce lithium for them, for their batteries? We have lots of ongoing discussions under NDA with uh, many domestic uh, producers, whether it be in batteries, uh, mining companies, chemical companies, both U.S., uh, European, and, and Asian. So. Mm -hmm. um, and in Argentina, I have to ask you, because it, it seems like, you know, Argentina, Chile, for instance, these are, um, you know, the the mines of the world for, for lithium. They have huge deposits of lithium in this area of South America, and the Argentinian government wants to be more involved in lithium production itself, even perhaps mining it itself. What kinds of guarantees do you have for your two projects in Argentina that you will actually be able to produce those mines and sell that lithium um, without having to make any sort of concessions in the future to the government? Uh, we have a tax stability uh, agreement with the government, and there's a long history, at least in lithium. Uh, I was with a former company, FMC, which is now Livent, which has been operating in Argentina for, for decades. Uh, it's the best jurisdiction, at least in the lithium triangle, uh, given the challenges in Chile with the redrafting of their constitution and then the history of Bolivia. Uh, so we, we feel uh, very, very confident and have good partnership both at the federal and the provincial level in Argentina. It's a, it's a great place to be uh, developing uh, assets. All right, John, we're going to have to let you go now. Hope you'll come back and, and keep us posted. Jonathan Thanks. Evans of Lithium Americas. All right, Tim Seymour, if you're a believer in the EV trade, shouldn't you be a believer in the lithium trade? You should be. Um, first of all, the, the moves in some of these stocks is, you know, these have been 10 baggers in the last 12 months. And, and I do think that there's uh, a dynamic where there will be more players. And we still don't really know where the lithium battery is going to end up. But there's no question the demand cycle. I mean, we've all, all we've done this year and for the last month or so is talk about what's going on in, in, in EV land. So um, this reminds me a lot of the uranium trade. It reminds me a lot even of the gold trade where you had these miners trading on the AIM or up in Toronto. And I just warned investors to be very careful. I'm not suggesting that this company is that. I'm suggesting that there are a lot of uh, smaller cap names. There have been a couple of companies that have de -spacked, um, And the moves in these stocks have been astronomical for companies that don't make money. Yeah. Guy? 
Well, I mean, going to Bolivia didn't work out too well for Butch and Sundance, but that notwithstanding, they have $500 million in cash and cash equivalents on their balance sheet. He just talked about the NDAs they're under. You know, if you get a, a headline that they're in talks with Tesla, Rivian, any of those names, the stock goes from current levels back to $41, where it was in the beginning of December. So I actually think the risk reward, I mean, this is the high, this is the deep end of the pool, $100 table. But you got to like these names, given what the potential is moving forward. Yeah. Uh, Nadine? You know, I agree with Guy. It's obviously a little bit more risk here, but you're going to see some headline uh, up and down risk here. Uh, and I, I can't say that I wouldn't trade something like this. Like when MP Materials yesterday was on sale heavily, we bought it. Um, we've been owners. It ran up. I sold it. So I, I think this is one thing that you also have to trade. This is not one of those things you go and you buy and you sit on because um, you sometimes will have crazy down days and crazy up days. But the point of the fundamentals is the price of batteries for electric cars remains strong despite a decade of falling prices. Demand is outstripping supply of lithium. And then supply is likely to remain constrained because the big Chinese producers, which we haven't talked about, you know, they continue to grapple with energy restrictions and they account for 65% of global battery production. So I can see fundamentally why you own it, but from operationally, we just haven't seen anything yet. So I'd just be a little bit more careful. I'd make this a very small trade. Is, would that be the number one issue for you, Karen? I mean, the fundamentals of the industry do point to a thriving lithium industry in theory, um, but this company hasn't actually produced mm -hmm. any lithium yet, although it will later this year. Right. So. You know what Yogi Berra says, in theory, there's no difference between theory and practice, but in practice, there is. So to me, it's just this, this you know, evolution of from in the mind to, okay, we actually have a product, we have a working mind, we're able to harvest, mine it, whatever they, however they refer to it. There, that's not going to go smooth as silk, no problem. So there's going to be ups and downs along the way for sure. This, I couldn't agree more with everyone. You have to trade around it. This is, this is, but, but I won't even trade around it. It's too, I, I don't have the constitution for it.